let's chat i want to talk about first samuel and actually we could get so much out of the bible reading it over and over again god's word is living the bible for a lot of people might seem boring for some people confusing and there's some there's a group of people who think the bible is just stories and all made up i'll invite those people into a different conversation what i'm trying to get at in this conversation is something that i've been getting out of first samuel and i'm talking about the whole entire book of first samuel first samuel has been on repeat in my house for many reasons at the beginning of the year i took a course called unique if you know you know and if you don't know well what it is it's a course to help you distinguish your passions your story and your gifts using all these things to have better discernment of where god may be calling you to serve how we can be serve as in like a whole body of christ everyone has different gifts that god gives us not everyone's the same not everyone has and when i say gifts like i'm not talking like i'm gonna make a video right after this about this but i'm not talking about over spiritualized well i can't say over spiritual like i don't like putting extra emphasis on the gifts of god over god god is my tri priority what i want to do is what god has given me i want to give back to him because he's so good and loving and amazing i just want to join in on that and share the love that he has for me back to him and to the rest of the world and you know my family my my family in christ the body of christ so anywho they use for samuel in that course for samuel has been popping up not just for that because it's a lot of because long story short david who eventually becomes king this is basically where his origin story comes in and when we're reading it we discover how the way the people chose kings back then was very different than god God let them have the king that they wanted because they so desperately wanted to have a king. They're like, okay, fine, whatever. Uh, this guy will show you. We'll show you like why I was holding off on this. <laughs> Sometimes God lets us have what we want. I mean, because we have free will. We do. God's sovereignty also plays into it. In his sovereignty, he allows us to learn lessons as well and is able to present us with different options. God shows us, okay, you can have this guy, fine. Later down along the line, we get King David. He was out there with the sheep, not someone that, you know, people would be like, oh, this man is royalty. He was a sassy, sassy kid, and he would go watch. He was the youngest of a bunch of brothers, and so they kind of overlooked him. And long story short, he eventually, all the things that happened, him herding the sheep and using his slingshot, like all the way he was raised, his passion, like he just like, there was a passion in him to protect and act in obedience to God's will, his faithfulness, his courageousness allowed for the army, I think it was a kid, for them to defeat a giant, a literal giant, shot him with a slingshot. And if he wasn't raised <laughs> as a shepherd, he wouldn't have learned that skill and defeated Goliath. A lot of the time we discredit where we come from and we kind of just choose to look at the negative as something that like oh, i can't believe this happened to me why me but we could actually learn a lot from even those things from the things that are neutral pleasant completely unpleasant looking at our story as a whole 
seeing what could I have learned, even if it's choices made by other people and ourselves, and it's not technically God who made certain things happen. He allowed them to happen. So that's one of the things that was popping up in First Samuel. Recently, I was watching church. I went to a retreat this past weekend, and on Sunday evening, I ended up going to a worship uh, a worship event, and so I was jam-packed. And so I finally got myself seated and watched church service. I mean, I could have gone to any other church, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, against going to other churches. I just love my church. I love my home church. Uh, shout out CBC San Antonio. We had Pastor Mo, who is a young adult pastor. He actually was a pastor that shared the sermon this weekend. And he actually brought up Per Samuel. And he was talking about preferences. Our preferences, how they can get in the way of what God has for us. And I was like, man, that is so true. Cause, and I was actually thinking about this last month. Uh, for me, I was thinking about it in regards to music. Because... I listen to all sorts of music. There's just something about hard rock, metal music, that energy. God makes all of us different. I get really sleepy with certain types of music. I still listen to Caleb, don't get me wrong. I don't like everyone. Preferences, right? But I still listen for the message of what is being said because it is, you know, the word of God. I mean, not all worship musicians. And that's, again, another another video. But I digress. <laughs> Our preferences in music can really challenge us from really seeing the message. There's so many amazing Christian men in metal and women in metal. Morning Eve bloodlines there is convictions uh, corpus christi uh (laughs) i can't think of all of them right now they're all flooding in anyways there's so many awesome metal bands out there who are men and women of god who are just sharing the truth of life in the way explicitly like they're just sharing it without a filter without you know they're saying the name of jesus in their lyrics and then there's some people in their comments <laughs> sharing how it's demonic because they're screaming. And they miss an opportunity in the message. Just because there's distortion, just because their voices are being raised and screaming, doesn't mean that it is demonic. God never said that our music needs to sound a specific way. I don't see it in scripture. He did say we need to be careful what with what we say not to lead people astray to not use profanities to edify other people right to lift them up we shouldn't be using our words for specific things right there that's that's what we're told we're not told (laughs) to make sure you don't have any distortion actually i want to make a couple points and this is where first samuel comes in God doesn't judge by appearance, but what is inside the heart, what's going on in our hearts. These people are worshiping, right? Another point is God uses yelling all throughout scripture. He says to shout praise, literally, isn't it shouting, yelling, screaming? Okay. And I know some would argue, it's like, well, it sounds screaming and yelling are different things okay that just sounds like you're trying to anywho the next part of it is how does the bible describe god's voice it describes it in many different ways <laughs> thunder sounds like the raging sea or roaring sea so I'm just saying, if you're going to be calling God's voice demonic because it sounds powerful. And then another argument that people make is like, well, I don't understand it. People didn't understand the parables either. 
he actually had to sit there and really like chew on it whenever you listen to metal music you develop an ear not granted not everyone is understandable but most people who are screaming they have a voice that is understood especially if you listen to metal music enough you develop a, a year for it year <laughs> year <laughs> sorry i think the latina in me pops up sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you develop an ear for it and you'll be able to understand what they're saying and discern like oh these are the words being used and you can always pull up the lyrics always test the spirit that's actually important too and i'll make that point not every metal band obviously not every christian metal band is sharing the truth of life in the way in a way that is correct but also that's true in every genre and I made a video about this, like there's actual Christian artists who are just, and I didn't even talk about other ones. And it just, for me, the truth is extremely important. For me, honoring God is extremely important. And I'm not legalistic. I do try to find the balance between, you know, the reverence and following the commandments, right? There's still, there's still, we're not lawless people. I don't want to be a lawless follower of God. I want to follow God in what he says is good, right, and just. That doesn't mean that I overdo it and I don't love on people. Just as Jesus taught, love God and love people. Top commandments. And I serve up the truth of grace and love as much as I can. So 1 Samuel talks about that. And then church service was talking about well, I mean, that's the thought that came out about perm persons. Now back to what I was talking about. And I go on so many tangents. Awesome for you that love tangent conversations. I really, I appreciate it. <laughs> but anyways, going back into a Pastor Mo was talking about preferences. Our preferences can get in the way of what God has for us. And it's another, you know, in our lives, whether it's dating, jobs, there's just so many reasons why we want to go based on our preferences. He was talking about how people wanted Saul as as a king, or they wanted a king. They're like, wow, like they, this is what we seek in a in a king. David didn't have those qualities when he was younger. He did end up being a wonderful leader, also a, hum a faulty person, as we all can be. He was described as a man after God's own heart. And he really sat there, especially when he was younger, he would sit there and listen for God to tell him when to move. And that's why he won so many victories. He moved when God said moved. He checked in with God. Again, <laughs> disclaimer, read for Samuel and read on uh, more. There's more. But uh, but anyway, so just sticking to First Samuel. There's always something more we get out of scripture. It is a living word of God. It is able to transform us because it is from God himself. And although we may be reading the same thing over and over again, there's always something that can edify our, our spirit and in our lives and the body of Christ. So it's important to read the Bible over and over and over again. And honestly, the more you understand it, the more juicy it gets. I the, I mean, it's been years since I first read it from cover to cover. First, it was a bit of a, a drag. Then I got really into it. It's actually really interesting, especially when you're able to do Bible study. I highly encourage Bible studies. There's so many good ones out there, um, but... Bible studies help us so that we can really chew on what's going on, really understand. And the Holy Spirit is actually, pray, pray that the Spirit guides you. And actually, I'll pray for you guys. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your living word, your, your word that you have given to us through the Bible, through many prophets, through many people, many scribes, God. You have willed this to happen so that we can know you better, so that you can reveal yourself to us, 
so that we are not walking aimlessly and directionless here on this earth so you pass this on from generation to generation with such love and mercy and grace for us god you give us so many graces that is just beyond me thank you so much god i pray for the people on the other side of the screen that they develop a hunger for your voice that they seek out your voice that they spend time with you lord reading your word chewing on your word really listening may the holy spirit guide them May their relationship with you deepen each and every single day, Lord. I pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that's just a little something I was thinking about. I will catch you guys in another episode. Uh, or not really an episode, but another video. <laughs> Take care. Love you all.